And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the prince is practically a forgotten figure. The intended victims of the bone-healing hoax have their money back. Squire Skimp has talked himself back into the good graces of those he tried to swindle, and things are once again looking up in Pine Ridge. As we look in on the little community today, we find Lum and Abner in the Jotham Down store. Lum is still worrying about what his fellow citizens think of him. Listen. Well, that don't look right, Lum. You hiding every time somebody comes in the store and slipping down the back way to work? I can't face them, Abner. I just can't do it. Oh, Fred O'Brien. I know I've made laughing stocks out of myself. Going around here making out like I had a broke leg and letting everybody sympathize with me. Instead of a grown man, sounds like some youngin' in the second reader. Well, you was the one that called up everybody and told them that your leg weren't sure enough broke. Well, I had to do that. Everybody thought the prince healed my leg, and I knowed anybody with a broke bone around here would be trying to get the prince to heal him, and I couldn't stand by and see him lose her money. Well, instead of being mad at you, they ought to appreciate you doing it. I thought it was pretty nice of you. Yeah, but the rest of them ain't going to look at it that way. Oh, well, of course, Sister Sampson will be pretty mad at you. Sister Sampson? Yeah, you going all over town and telling that the only reason you made out like you had a broke leg to start with was to keep from taking her to that sociable. That's right, Annie. I believe you ought to call her up and apologize. Like no, that. no, no, sir. I agree, I want to stay just as far away from that woman as I can. If it hadn't been for her, I wouldn't have been in all this trouble. Yeah, but I'd hate for her to get mad and start trading somewhere else. Her run that boarding house, why, she's about the best customer we got here at the store. Yeah, I hate that part about it. But you know yourself, that woman's had her cap set for me for years. If I call up over there and apologize to her, she'll think I'm making love to her. She takes advantage of every opportunity she gets to chase me. Well, if you want Miss Frederick to care anything about you, why, you better keep Sister Sampson in a good humors with you. Well, what's Sister Sampson got to do with Miss Frederick? Well, Miss Frederick's staying over at Sister Simpson's boarding house. You know how that old woman talks about somebody she don't like. She'll run you down, zaggerate things to where Miss Frederick will hate and despise you. Well, the whole thing's so mixed up now, I don't know what I want to do. Fact is, I might not even care what Miss Frederick thinks. You mean you, you don't care nothing about Miss Frederick no more? Well, I don't know. Granny's eye might be a woman hater. I don't know. You might, huh? Looks like they caused me all my trouble. I think I'm a lone wolf. You are? If it means what I think it does, I am. Well, I, I don't know what it means myself. Well, it's a fella that sort of lives by himself, don't have nothing to do with nobody. Dependent sort of a fella. Yeah. Well, sir, I was in hopes that you and a school teacher would sort of hit it off together, Lum. <laughs> Maybe jump the broomstick. <laughs> no, no, that's all off now. I know she must think I'm awful. Terrible. Here I walked to school with her three or four times on them crutches, and her sympathized with me over my broke leg. Now she finds out it was all a fake. She won't want to have nothing more to do with me. Well, I still think you ought to get married, though, Lum. If you think you and Miss Fredericks is busted up, why, you ought to find somebody else to get in her... Oh, I don't know. You'll have to do your own picking out. What about the widow Abernathy? Ah, oh, for goodness sakes. Her and that passel of youngins. Mm, let's see. Oh, how about Ezra Seastrunk's old maid sister? I know Ezra'd like to get shut of her, and she's a good cook. Desdemony? Yes, sir. Ah, no, sir. Too old. Too old? She's younger than Ezra, and you and him's about the same age. Too old, too old. Well... How old do you think you are, anyway? You've looked at them pictures of yourself you got over at the place as took about 25 years ago, and you forget that you've got older since then. I don't look as old as Ezra and his sister, I know that. They're old enough to be one another's grandma. Have you took a good look at yourself lately in a looking glass? Well, yeah, but you can't tell nothing about that. Can't tell nothing about it? I wouldn't go by that mirror I've got over at my place for nothing. 
It ain't made right some way or other. Well. I look at it one way and I got a big lantern jaw on me, and then I look at it another way and I ain't got no chin at all. Well. Used to scare the daylights out of me. I'd look in there and one of my eyes would be about four times as big as the other. And I found out I could move a little and my nose would get big. You know that ain't right. No, no, your eyes is about the same size, all right. They're mates, ain't no doubt about that. Or one of them is, anyway. Oh, sure, it's just the mirror. I know that. Let's see now. Who else could you marry around well, here? I ain't trying to get married, Abner. I told you I'm a lone wolf. Well, it just don't look right, Lom. You were at your place milking them cows, chopping the wood, doing a woman's work. It just ain't right. Well, I went too long now to change, Abner. You've been trying to get me married off ever since I've known you. I ain't trying to get you married off. It's your business. I don't care. If you want to be a lone fox, be one. Whoa. Well, whatever kind of animal you said you going to be. If you want to hate women, hate them, I know. Oh, I ain't going to hate them. I just ain't going to have nothing to do with them, so. It's a shame myself over this broken leg business. I got to do something to where folks will get to know the real Lum Edwards. The real Lum Edwards? Ain't you him? Not lately, I ain't been. I've been a Dr. Jekyll and Hyde. Who? I've been two fellers lately, you might say. Well, there ain't been but one of you down here at the store. Yeah, well, I've been one feller around you, and then when I went outside with a broke leg, I was somebody else. Well, who? Well, it was me, but at the same time, it was another feller. Somebody that was unhonest, going around and telling stories, going around like his leg was broke when it wasn't. Well, that was you, Lom. I seen you. No, it wasn't. Not the real me. Well, what do you know about that? You, you ain't got a ghost, have you? A ghost? I ain't even dead. Well, wh what is this thing that's going around making out like it's you, then? It is me. It's you making out like it's you? Well, I don't know how to explain it to you, Abner, but didn't you never feel like you was two different people? Oh, ho, ho. of course not. Well, I have. There's the real me, and then there's another somebody inside of me that makes me do things that ain't like me. Well, I do know. Well, well couldn't you have it took out of you? Took it? It's in my brain, Abner. I've got what you call a do-all personalities. Well, can you tell when this other feller's making you do something? <laughs> no, not right at first. You got me talked into it before I know what I'm doing, hardly. Well, I'd find out first who was telling me to do things before I done them. If it's that other something, why, I'd just set my foot down and not do it. He's liable to get you in some serious trouble on him. I know it. That's what I've got to watch close. It, well, well, which one of you is doing the talking now? You mean right now? Yeah, right now. Oh, yeah. this is the real me talking now. Well, good, good. I don't want to have no dealings with that other feller. If he ever starts talking, Lom, I wish you'd wink at me or something so I won't pay no attention to him. That must have been that other fella that bought them six gross of plow points that we've had back there for about five years. It won't fit none of the plows in this part of the country. Must have been. Well, I thought undoubtedly you had more sense than that. All them women's hats we got over on the dry goods side. I dog his eye bound you, he bought them too. Well, I wouldn't want to lay everything on him. You, you still don't quite understand it. It's me, all right, and still, on the other hand, it ain't. Well, I wish you'd quit letting him do any of the buying around here, Lom. He's going to break us. Oh, I don't know as I've made such bad buys. Well, it ain't you. It's him. Like letting that no-good Oscar Fields have $20 worth of stuff on a credit the other day. Anybody with just half cents would know we'll never collect it. Well, now, don't go too far with your remarks. That's me you're talking about. No, it ain't. It's that other fella, whatever his name is. It was me that let Oscar Fields have that stuff on a credit the other day. No, used to take up for him, Lum. I know who it is now. I doggy, this explained a lot of crazy things to me that's been happening around here. Wait a minute. Are you insinuating that I don't know nothing about running this Wait a minute, that's our ring, I believe, Lum. I'll get it. Glad to find out about Grant. that young fella. Hello, jot em down store. Lum Edward's doing the talking. Oh, good. I'm glad it ain't that other somebody. Who? Oh, why, probably well, I reckon. Wished I had somebody inside of me that way. Oh, you did? Fine fella. Where? Call him Vester, I believe. Uh-huh. Love that name, Vester. Ed Marmy. Say, good morning, Vess. How are you? Oh, well, I never done nothing to speak of. Say, oh, I don't know. What difference make, Abner? 
Well, well, I was afraid everybody might be mad at me over it. I want to know how you feel, so I know how I feel. Well, I do know. <laughs> Come here, Vess. Yes, down. Mom? Oh, boy, I'm proud to know well, you. Well, that's mighty nice of you to call, Miss Frederick. Miss Frederick? Oh. Well, thank you, Mom. That's who he's talking to. Well, thank you for calling. Look at him, excited. Goodbye. Hi, right, Granny, do you know who that was, Abner? It was Miss Frederick, and she admires me. Admires Yes, sir. Told me so right then. Admires you for what? Well, for exposing my fake broke leg just to keep Grandpa Masters and these other folks around here from letting Squire and the Prince beat them out of their money. She says I'm a hero. Well, hey, Granny, she might be right about it, too. I never had thought about it just that way. <laughs> well, what are you getting so excited about? I thought you weren't going to have nothing more to do with women folk. I ain't going to have nothing more to do with them. And I ain't excited, neither. Well, you better not try to walk too far away from that telephone, then. Huh? Well, maybe you ain't excited, Lon, but I never seen you do that before. Do what? When you got done talking to Miss Frederick just now... Instead of hanging up a receiver there, why, you put it in your coat pocket. Well, I'll be dead blind. Uh, m- must have been that other you.